This video is sponsored by Keeps. There'll be more on that later. Good morning guys, welcome back to the A-frame. Today, we're gonna try to fill in the inside. So the front wall, the back wall, do our front cladding and all that sort of good stuff. We, I, I've been kind of hemming and hawing on exactly what to do. I haven't quite yet decided. I'm just gonna start building. I think that's the only way to start get this thing. Maybe it'll come to me as I, as I build. I've got, uh, I got Don here. He's, uh, he's just stripping some of these windows. We got some more windows that we took out of a job, and probably about a year ago now, and they've been sitting, sitting out back, and they're, uh, they're crank out windows, and they're, they're held together in the middle with little cleats, so you can break them apart, and that gives you two windows. So we'll have four windows to work with. We also have this really, really long guy, which, uh, you know, can be really, really short, narrow windows, so we could use those things too. We've also got a screen for, I think, for the front door, so I haven't, haven't quite determined exactly where any of this stuff is going yet, but we're gonna start building see where we get. I feel like I should inform you that the sun has come out. It feels like it's the first time the sun has come out in four or five days. It's been obscenely dreary around here. Dreary! It's gonna be spectacular when the sun actually does come out. As you can see, we're moving right along on our walls. It's uh, kind of a pain to stick frame a giant triangle. Uh, we've got our wood in place mostly. We just gotta fill in a couple of the top parts and uh, then we're gonna have a window frame. We've got, uh, we've decided to do uprights on our windows so we don't have to uh, you know, do it on an angle or anything like that. And then we're gonna to try to incorporate or keep some of the structural framing in the final of the build. And then we've got our fireplace, which is going to go right in the middle of those focal windows. I think it'll give us a nice little focal point. I think it'll be cool. What do you think, Don? Should be cool. Should be cool, right? Should be. Yeah. All right, we got the back done. As you can see, we got our plywood up, we got our windows in, we're moving right along. We got quite a bit done today. We haven't quite decided what we're gonna do for finishing on this plywood. It might just get like a solid stain or something like that, just for now, just to keep the weather off of it, because uh, winter's coming and uh, we wanna get it done. But we're gonna focus on the front and the sides because uh, that's our primary objective. This video is sponsored by Keeps. Did you guys know that two out of three guys at some point will experience male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? Keeps is a more affordable option to hair loss because it offers a generic version of the FDA approved medication. With Keeps, a licensed doctor will review your information online and then recommend the right hair loss treatment plan for you. Then your treatment is shipped directly to your door every three months. Message your Keeps doctors 24 seven if you have any questions or concerns along the way. And you can also keep track of your progress using Keeps tracking tool. When dealing with hair loss, prevention is the key. It can take up to four to six months for Keeps treatment to work. So the idea is to act fast in order to keep what you have. If you're ready to take action to prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash modern self-reliance and you can get 50% off your first order or click the link in the description below. After much debate whether or not I should just build a door or if I have something laying around or if I could, you know, reuse something, I ended up finding myself a old patio door. So a sliding glass door. Uh, one of them was fogged and the other one was just laying around, so I figured I would uh, hinge it. So I'm gonna hinge it here. I've got the door frame built out. And uh, so I did built that on the floor and then stood it up. And then what I'm gonna do is actually take the door and ins insert it in here. But uh, first, what I gotta do on the outside is actually fill in the plywood. I wanted a little bit of a detail here because I wanted to build it out. It'll come together a little bit more once I've got uh, some of the cladding on, but as you guys can see, Got most of the fronts because I wanted to preserve the front structure of the cabin in order to kind of showcase it because you can see you can see the timber frame construction so I wanted to be able to see that when everything is said and done so that's why it kind of builds in towards the cabin all right so we're we're just working on it and my, my buddy my buddy Dom he's he's the guy you're the guy your portal garage doors yeah yeah so he's the guy that hooks me up with all these garage doors this is the first time him seeing this thing. You, you dropped these off in the, what was it? In, it was in the spring. May, yeah, it was May. in the spring. So where did you get these? From a job that we did, we removed some uh, four doors from a fire hall in uh, London, Ontario. We put some new doors in and gave these to you. So what's your opinion on, on my weather stripping? Like my weather sealing? Do you think these things are gonna leak or what? 
my guys couldn't do a better job. You don't think so? No. no. Oh, okay. All Fantastic. right. Fantastic. So like caulking the seams, you think this will this will work? Yeah. And I was mentioning before when uh, when we were putting it together that uh, between each glass, like are they are they waterproof in the frames themselves? Yes. Do, do you know? Yes. Yeah. There's butyl tape around the frames. Okay. Around the openings, okay. and then the the glass is stuck in stuck into the opening. Perfect. Okay. Well, I was gonna. I was saying if if, if it was going to leak, I was just gonna go around each individual window <laughs> with shouldn't the same, have to. like pro have glaze to. or something like oh, that oh, in order to make it. You can see it here. Okay. That's the butyl. Oh, it's. I mean, you can't see it, but it's it's in there. It's in there. It's so in I don't have to worry green. about leaking. No. And then in each seam, it's got it's got the weather stripping between each panel as well, and as well as it's got caulking as well. Yes. So this thing this thing is gonna be like. I wouldn't say bulletproof because it is made of glass. Storm shelter. Storm shelter. That's right. <laughs> it'll, it'll withstand 100 kilometer an hour rains and hurricanes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just don't be in it when the trees fall. That's right. Well, yeah. it, it's got. It says safety glass and something. Something. It's tempered. But I think it's got some sort of some sort of like anti it's, like smashing clear just, coat on it or something. I, I think it's just tempered. It does say tempered, but I think I, I something something guard. It could be the tinting. Yeah. Maybe like a UV guard for the tinting. Hmm. I'm not sure. We we took them out, so. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So what did you end up putting in there? What did you replace? Like these ones came out. What did you put in? We put in overhead door company model 521s. <laughs> right. You put in better doors than better what came. Doors. Okay, better yes. doors. So probably a thermal pane of some sort. All yeah, about energy we efficiency. We did a we did a thermal pane half inch window. We did a powder coated door, and then we also had uh, it was foam insulated. Oh, okay. All the styles were foam. This is single pane non insulated, right? So it's kind of these were put in in 1997. Wow. Yeah. So, anyways, you know what? We diverted them from the landfill, and, and any day you can do that, that's a good day for me. All right, guys. Now that we have all our our sheeting up on the outside. I want to cut some holes in it. Now, it is predominantly made of glass, but I think I should add some more glass. So my door is going to be glass. I tried to make some of my windows that I had fit in these uh, side places over here and over here. They don't quite fit. It turns out you don't have that much room in a triangle. So what I'm going to do is above the door, I was going to add a little detail and it's this guy right here. This is the very dirty. You got to wash it. They're all you know, they store them in the back. It's just really cool as you talk into it and really amplifies the sound. It's kind of cool because it's a big, it's kind of a dome. Anyway, so this is going to go above the door at some point. I think I got to, I got to center it above the door, cut it out. And then that gives me pretty much all the openings that I need in this place. It'll add a little uh, je ne sais quoi, you know, a little bit of detail because it's all about making it look good, I think, because I like circles. This is actually one of the um, last window circle, circle windows I have. And uh, so the history behind these is I was at the scrapyard one day and uh, they were taking apart these high bay lights and uh, they had all these glass set aside. And I was like, those are really cool. I'm like, what are you gonna do with them? He says, well, we're just gonna throw them out. And I was like, well, if you're gonna throw them out, I'd like them. So anyways, I picked them up. There was a whole, there was a whole bunch of them. And uh, I brought them home and I washed them. And I had one sitting on top of a garbage can and uh, I had water in the inside of it and I was washing it, making it all pretty. And um, it exploded. Uh, <laughs> so as it, as it turns out, the, uh, it is tempered glass because it is a, for high bay. And if you scratch it with like a little rock or a pebble or something like that, they do explode. Or there was like a defect on the outside. They weren't very careful with them because they were gonna ultimately throw them out at the end of the day. But I haven't had one explode since and um, I've got two left. So these are actually, this one here is actually smaller. This is the smaller version of, of the circles. The other circles that I've been putting in are, are quite large. They're larger than this one, slightly larger than this one. But uh, I wanna put one in. I've got my template all set up. I'm just gonna mark it out and cut it out. And uh, then I can install this guy. Once I got the circle all cut out, all I had to do was cut a bunch of blocks, two by four blocks, just the thickness of my wall. And I actually skirted all the way around the circle in order to give myself structure from when I'm finishing on the inside, something to nail to. It's not like the first time I've done the circle, but everyone's unique. I'm gonna talk a little bit about frugal building and the ways to do it. So whenever I'm building something, I kind of have a plan in my head and I kind of know exactly what I need in order to build it. So over time, what I do is I actually peruse all the big box store flyers 
and usually on the first page what they have is called the lost leader and what that is designed to do is get you in the store so it's usually like you know a, a box of something and it's on sale half price or even less than half price and the idea is to get you in the store and, and you buy that box of screws and then all of a sudden you see something else and you're like oh i need that too so you end up buying that and that's how they make their money so whenever you're building something what i like to do is collect stuff over time so you go and you find the lost leaders and you buy them that's all you do is you go in the store you buy those things and then you go to the next store and you buy the other thing that's on sale and, and then you just kind of collect your stuff over time and that's the easiest way to buy something cheaply enough in order to to make it work you know in these tough i guess economic times or whatever whatever you want to call them right now is you got to find the deals you know I, I collect wood i get wood a lot of the times but fasteners is always the uh always the hard one to get i tend to find a lot of fasteners at princess auto uh they do have like bulk sales on uh on fasteners and whenever when I see a box of screws, even if I don't need them immediately, I end up buying them because I'm gonna use them at some point. And you know what, they're like currency. If you stock up on fasteners, at the end of the day, maybe you're too old to build and you're like, you know, I don't know, gonna retire. You have a yard sale and you can sell those fasteners for twice what you paid for them. I should coin that term the, uh, you know, strategic fastener reserve. Always have enough fasteners on hand to build your projects. Because if you've got to buy them under duress, you're going to end up paying too much. Details, details, it's all in the details. Just bringing you guys up to speed on this little detail. This is the little window ledge here. It's not, not a window ledge. It looks like a window ledge, but it's not. It's kind of like a, it's a ledge where my cladding is going to sit on top. And what I do when I put these guys on is I always make sure they're a little bit slanted so the water runs off. So if the water comes in in this direction, it's here, runs down here, and then drips off here without causing any damage to stuff below that. You don't want it sloping in because what it'll do is it'll rot the building over time. This is a piece of hardwood. It's ash. You can see it's kind of already weathered. And uh, that's kind of what the color of this stuff is going to be once it's got the ash paneling on it. So I've got, this is essentially the trim, the, the trim pieces. So you got the build out here. And anytime I put a build out, I always like to put a little bit of a reveal. I don't like to butt them up against each other. They kind of give a little space. And then that way you don't have to be precise. And it kind of gives it a more interesting. It's, it's, it's a nice way to finish it, especially when you're doing trim. You don't butt your trim right up to the edge of the jam. What you do is you leave it back like a finger, lid, a finger width or an eighth of an inch or so, and that finishes it off nice. So I've got, I got both sides all done. Now all I've got to do is wait for my little cookies because we're going to do the uh, modified cordwood front. And that's the next, that's the next step. Holy hand out of that door's head. My original plan was to have some sort of fascia made up, bent up for the front, but uh, that didn't quite pan out the way I wanted it to. We had some material issues. So instead, what I did was I actually had a, some of the old garage door panels. What I ended up doing is taking this chunk off of a panel that was unused. And uh, what I was able to do is actually cut an angle peak edge there and put some mending plates on the front of it and then attach it. And I think it looks pretty darn good. Kind of looks like a stealth bomber now. It's got all that angular, thing to it it's got i kind of like the hang the, 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 where it's hanging over here when you look right at the front you can kind of see it it kind of extends the line well the ladder looks like it's extending the line but anyways you can stick extend the line over here so you can see that so i, I kind of like that look so i don't know if i'm going to cut it off or not or if it's just that's the way it's going to be over here i don't know maybe you should catch your shoulder all right we'll decide later we can always we can always cut it off it's really hard to put it back on you ever trust the weatherman on something and he's dead wrong well he's dead wrong today it was supposed to be a rain delay that's why i, I was telling don we might as well just you know lay low and uh, i'll just do some inside stuff as it turns out it's not raining what gives maybe it'll rain a little bit later on so the plan today is to get the door installed right here i've got an old um sliding patio door that i've salvaged i ended up gluing a little strip in there in order to accommodate the space for the hinges otherwise there's like a little groove there's a little groove that's the top the top of the door is okay but the uh, the side of the door i'm gonna put my hinges i don't want a groove there so i put a piece of wood in there i've put some pl premium in there to hold her in and it's hardened up so that's where i'm going to mortise my hinge and then once my hinge is mortised i get to hang them 
on my door jam, which is right there. I'm not exactly certain that the door is gonna hold up over time. It's not designed to be hung from hinges. I'm gonna put three hinges on to give it a little bit more extra support. And uh, if all those fails in the future, if it does fail, I will uh, just build another door. But I'd really like to try this. I wanna see if it works. And uh, you guys can stay tuned with me and uh, see over time to see if this door holds up. It is a, you know, just a big chunk of glass with a couple of wood sides on it. So it should, should work out good. Let's get it hung. Let's see how it looks. These are the hinges I'm gonna be using. These are the hinges I salvaged from that uh, house, uh, turns out the house teardown. And uh, so I saved them and they're, they're old school, like, like bronze, brass, the brass hinges. Uh, they got a little bit of paint on them, but that's, they're gonna be mortised in the place and they're gonna hold the door. So I've got three of these guys and they're gonna be all three of them on the door. It's cool tool time. And, and this is a cool tool. This is a plunge router. This is my Black & Decker plunge router. And it's a really cool tool for putting in hinges. This is what I like to do with this tool. And I also like to use it to round over stuff, like a cove, an OG, all those fancy things. So this thing goes up and down. It spins really fast. It's one of the da most dangerous tools in your toolbox because what it does is instead of like cutting your finger off, what it do is it'll chew it up so it's useless. So you don't want to put your fingers in there. And uh, yeah, this is a... Black & Decker plunge router. And then because my hinge is square, I use an X-Acto knife to trim my edges because my router bit is round. Well, it doesn't always work that easy, but this one worked really, really well. It seems to fit in there really good. My opening's nice and square. Uh, and uh, yeah, I've got, I can see a little bit through the door, but that's the, uh, beside the door and the uh, the jam, but that's uh, the stop will fix that. I've got a little bit of re damage to repair up top here. I guess either when it was getting removed, it kind of got ripped out. So what I'll do is I'll just rip that chunk out and then splice in a piece of wood. And then Bondo is your friend on these type of projects. So as you can see the door, opens and closes really, really nicely. So as long as we can keep it from winging open and hitting over here, it actually opens enough that it won't uh, probably put a stop in there before sooner than later, in case the door goes through the ceiling, which would not be good. But otherwise I am pleased with that. That is a, uh, that's a sort of a project you start with a bucket full of patience and hopefully you don't run out by the end of the project. How do you guys like this weather? Hey, Is it nice? You like the cold? Nice and refreshing? Yeah. Get your breakfast. Got their little pen. Little warm pen. That looks cozy, doesn't it? Your bed looks cozy. Well, good morning, guys. It's a fine day. It's sunny. The humidity is lifted. The cold has come in. But the sunshine is there. Did I mention it's sunny? Anyways, today the plan is to uh, get some material for the A-frame, the bottom knee wall. I'm gonna probably do some uh, board and batten. I've got some, uh, some logs that have been kicking around here for a while that I'm gonna use. The thing is, is I don't have to go very uh, long because it's going to be only four feet tall because that's my knee wall. So I've got some, uh, I got a really big ash log sitting right here, nice and straight. I've also got some walnut. You guys can't even see it. There we go. So I've got a uh, ash log here. I don't know if I'll be able to lift that, but that'll give me a lot of material. I also have some walnut and some oak, but I don't think that's uh, suitable for the front of the cabin. Maybe a little bit too ornate, but uh, as you can see, I got some inventory here and I've got some inventory over there. I got to first change my blade because uh, last time I used the mill, I hit a bullet in a tree and uh, the, the blade went all when I'll crook it. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't, I, I didn't notice it until I was actually putting the stuff up that, uh, that I'd hit uh, something metal. And anytime you hit something metal with your saw blade, it kind of throws everything out of whack. It's got to be in whack for it to work. 
thing about the mill is that uh, it, it works really, really well when it's working really, really well. But you kind of have to always kind of, you always kind of have to take care of it. You always have to change the blades. You always have to make sure it's lubricated and whatnot in order to kind of maintain your equipment. So it works when you need it and it works flawlessly when you need it. Because one thing I hate about material, or like equipment that just isn't working right. It's just frustrating. So spend some time on that, get it working and uh, yeah. No wonder you guys are so dusty all the time. You guys are just standing in the way. You guys got to get out of the way when there's sawdust coming. Anyways, that's that's how I build a log. So what I try to do, when I'm, especially when I'm doing any thin stuff, is I like to follow the center of the log. What I'll do is I'll rotate the log as I go to try to maintain the heart of the log, meaning the where the center of the log is in the middle. And what that allows it to do is that the, the boards seem to come off and they last longer. They don't, they don't seem to like, go crooked all the time because they're following the heart of the log. So you just kind of take chunks off the sides as you go and you continuously rotate the log, maintaining the center of the log in the center of the uh, board. With that one in particular, there was a crack down the center. So I was trying to, you know, go with the crack. So it's runs parallel with the board. So I don't keep wasting my logs on my boards. So uh, it, it yielded quite a bit, quite a bit of material. I probably need a couple more to get my, uh, my siding done. So I'll just probably mill up another one and then uh, head on down to the A-frame to get, uh, get started. Well, how's that for a really fancy window? So I had my buddy Dennis weld up a, uh, a frame for that thing and gave it to me in a rough state and I grinded it out and ended up painting it and ended up gluing my, or siliconing my glass eyeball window to the front of it. I think that looks crazy cool. That looks, that looks really neat. What do you think, Don? Isn't it cool looking? That looks great. It's actually, it's neat because it actually reflects the sun. It reflects the, the, the horizon. You can kind of see it in the, in the window. It's that's really cool. I'm like pretty excited. I think you're approaching the end of the project when you have solutions to all the problems. They just kind of adding up. The solutions keep adding up, not the problems. Usually at the start of the project, all your you just kind of keep accumulating problems. Don looks like he's ready to make a fire. It's getting cold. It's, today's cold. Got the got the sweater vest on. So uh, yeah, that looks cool. So all we gotta do now is uh, is install our cookies all the way around that and put our board and battens and uh, we'll have buttoned up the front of this guy just in time for inside work. Snow is gonna start flying soon. That's pretty crazy to talk about, isn't it? Feels like just the other day it was summer. We ended up cutting a bunch of these little guy, little round cedar chunks. Uh, I call them cookies. I don't know what they call them. Little coasters, they could be coasters, cookies, whatever the heck you wanna call. So the plan is to glue these all to the front of the, uh, of the cabin using some PL Premium. We're gonna glue those there. And then afterwards, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually take our little piping bag. If you've uh, ever made a cake, you need to pipe the icing in. It's like a little piping bag and you pipe the mortar in between them. And that's gonna give us somewhat of a waterproof facade on this A-frame. Well guys, that took an absurd amount of time. <laughs> I think real time was like three hours. Oh, it kind of hurts. It looks cool. It looks really cool. Doesn't that look neat? That looks, that looks really cool. What do you think, Don? Look at that. I like it. Doesn't it look like a, a pretty big game of Plinko? Maybe we should drop some, uh, some what do they drop down the Plinko game? Marble? Is it a ball or a marble or something? A ball bearing or something? It's a, maybe a ball bearing. We should just drop it from the top and see where it lands. We, we should put some, anyways, yeah, that's, a, that's another game. That's, uh, it does look like, it does really look really cool. I think it looks, I think it looks amazing. Right like, right like that. Blah, it's cool. Anyways, 
that's pretty neat. Now we're gonna we're gonna break that up monotony with uh, we're gonna see if uh, Don can hit some of these cookies. All right, so here's the plan. We're gonna take this cookie. I'm gonna toss it up in the air like a t-ball. I'm gonna Don is gonna cork a couple of them. You think? Try. Aim, aim that way. Okay. Ready? Oh, we got one. Are you ready? Toss number two. Oh, I was too far. I, I, I get that way a bit. Go that way. Okay. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want a cookie in the head. Oh, <laughs> another one. Oh, that, that's a home run. <laughs> Ready? Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> that was a triple. Oh, ball. <laughs> that was gone. Ready? Oh, that, that, was, that was a bad one. <laughs> oh, oh, I missed one. That was pretty good. Can we go rapid fire mode? Ready? Be sore. Sore tomorrow. It's, it's warm up for hockey tonight. <laughs> that was sweet. I want to. I want to try to hit one. Here. Oh. <laughs> Too close. Ah. They're harder than it looks to hit them. move anymore. Whew. It's a viable game. A cookie batten game. All right, so the plan now is to take our milled siding. We're going to do board and batten siding. And this is going to go in the front. We're going to do it up and down. We'll do it vertically. And then before we're going to do that, we're going to actually attach some uh, tar paper to further waterproof the front. And uh, my plan at some point is to actually make the wood turn gray so it matches everything else. This piece up here is an ash chunk, my ash ledge, and uh, this is gonna be ash as well. And it's gonna have that fade to that nice dark gray color at some point in the future. Stay tuned for that, I guess. It's gonna match our aluminum. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's the goal. That's our color scheme, it's gray on this bad boy. It's shaping up pretty good. Just gotta get some tar paper on. We started off with the board and batten at the front of the building. We started right in the middle of the door and we attached our boards and we went all the way across ensuring they were level, cut around the door and then cut the piece to size near the end of the uh, building. And then what we did was we added the battens and we sure to level those or plumb them in order to make it appear straight. And then after that was done, we just nailed them off extra well and uh, we're done. Our next step is to do the ridge cap. I had my buddy Dennis bend up some metal. We're gonna install it on the ridge. My original plan was to get a uh, seamless piece one front to back, we couldn't find that stuff. So we ended up actually taking the bottom sections of the garage door, it had an aluminum panel on it, and we took that, and we bent it in half to make ridge cap. So we've got four of them, and we're gonna lay them like shingles along the ridge. But first, what I'm gonna do is address the overhang. When we first installed the roof, we kind of made it fit exactly. There's about a half an inch or an inch overhang from the roof to the wall. And what I want to do is add another three inches. So what we've done is actually taken another panel apart and saved this one rib. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually silicone it to the side of this and then meet up in the middle. And that'll give us a little bit of a overhang, give us a little bit more kind of room for air when it rains. The, the rain kind of hits it and kind of shears it off to the edge. You know, we got to work with what we got because well, that's what we got. So that's the plan. We're going to just cut a peek into the uh, piece and install them. That should be good. We can actually see it here. We've done, we've done the front. You can see it. We haven't quite glued it yet. It's just attached at the front. So what we'll do is we'll run a bead of silicone caulking up inside there to give it a nice watertight seal. So the other day when it rained, it turns out these panels are not exactly 
waterproof. So we're gonna have to deal with that because they do leak. But I've got a pl I got a plan. We're gonna deal with that in a little bit. There's a limited opportunity, a limited window of opportunity to actually get this stuff caulked. So it's kind of a pain, but uh, I think I'm gonna have to do every single one of these windows. Um, there was supposed to be, I guess the spec on them was supposed to be some sort of glazing in between, like a waterproof glazing. But what I was finding when it was raining was the actual water was pooling down only at the sides of the mullion. So what I'm doing is I'll caulk both sides of these guys, let it dry and then caulk the tops and the bottoms the next day. But uh, that should keep us the water out of it. And uh, you just kind of wait for it to rain and then you go check it again and see if uh, you need to put more caulking in. Because, hey, it is what it is, right? It's a glass building sort of thing. So anyways, this is the, this is the ridge cap. This is uh, the bent aluminum. Uh, I didn't fill much of it because it was uh, quite precarious to do it. So that, that's a little, my little hat's on now. And uh, yeah, that's pretty cool because it didn't cost me a dime. So that's the old aluminum stuff from the from the door so as you can see she's all she's got the hat on it nicey nice and then i've got another thing over here for the uh, the chimney cap i'll show you that i think it's a pretty cool hat this is the chimney cap it's custom bent to the proper size of the ridge cap and that's going to uh let me take this off my head i feel like don quixote or something like that from lord of la mancha so that's that's it there i can uh it looks like armor somebody would wear that to battle in the middle ages it's uh, made out of aluminum it's all bent it's got the uh, nice slope on the top to shed water and that is going to go on my ridge cap in order to allow my chimney to go through it you can see i've already got the thing marked out so i'll just go on the top i'm going to ask you guys your your opinion on this and because i know the, the the people that really follow this channel watch until the very end everybody else just checked out but you guys have the opportunity to decide whether or not i put uh, mortar in between these cookies on the wall. I kind of like the way it looks right right now uh, My original plan was to in install mortar kind of like kind of like a brick or like uh, It's what is it? Is it chinking? It's not chinking. It's uh, pointing. It's the pointing. It's like, like the stuff that goes between bricks So that was the plan there. It was like a gray sort of uh, pointing that goes in between the cookies I kind of like the subtlety of this because if I put it in there it's going to look it's going to look very dark so i don't know if i want to go dark or if i just want to leave it the way it is and let it weather and it turns that silver gray color i don't know it's up to you guys let me know uh i'm not going to do it i'm not going to do it right now because I, i'm kind of i kind of like the way it is and, and and if i do it i'll have to i can't undo it so but i can think about it anyways i like the way it turns out i hope you guys do too join me on the next one